Welcome to today's edition of Timmy Talks. Today I have something very perfect for an afternoon. Join me, it will be fun. So today I'm going to Frisky Business Cat Cafe in Palm Springs, a brand new business with a great new concept, coffee and cats. Business. Thank you. Hi. Hi there. Coming to see the cats? Yes, we have an appointment today at 3 o'clock. Okay, uh, so we have two for the cats. Okay, and it comes with a free 16 ounce drink of your choice. Okay, awesome. So, in terms of the, the drink, could you pick anything on here? Yeah, or? absolutely. And then, and then some because our barista Sam is amazing. Hey, Sam. At whipping up whatever you want. All right. We're going to try it out. I'm going to try it out. Oh. You're going to try it out? I like that. <laughs> Do you want that with espresso? You want it dirty or no? Um. Sure, why not? Yeah. You're being all cautious. Do you want it dirty? We're going to go a hot, dirty, chai with regular milk? Yes, sir. So I had the pleasure of meeting today with Claire Rogers. She is the owner and founder of the Cat Cafe. And Sonny Von Cleveland there is her other half. And he is as supportive as someone could possibly be. Point, I do need to actually do a menu to explain that there is a fee to go into the lounge. Right. Uh, I'd say 95% of people understand that, but 5% it's a new concept and so sure. forth. And so I just need to explain that the fee actually helps us pay the rent and the bills and look after 12 cats. Total comes to 4807. Sanitize your paws. The cats are going to tell you that they're allowed out here, but they're not. They're, <laughs> they're, they're just cute little liars. Hi. It's a monumental day as well because uh, Bubba, uh, Bubba. Bubba. Bubba and uh, Penelope are out for the first time ever. Oh, awesome. They've been in the back since we've got Hiding, them, and today and they've, they've come moved out. in. They don't want to hang out with you, but they're in the... Wow, I can't believe the cats came up to me and this one I love, it's green eyes. Wow, and they, you know, the cats here have so many toys and so many little nooks and things to play with. And so when you enter the room, it's there's a bunch of seating for you to um, sit down and trust me, the cats will come up to you. And there's a lot of toys that you can grab or throw and the younger cats love to play like this one. He just was so playful and ready to, you know, attack that little toy. <laughs> and I just love how cute. Love that. If you're in the market for a cat, this is a great opportunity to spend some time and really understand the personality of the cat. There's younger kittens, younger cats who want to play and are ready to just jump on anything that moves. There's older cats who will just sit on your lap and allow you to pet them. Though, So it's a great opportunity to really see how the cat interacts and um, how it fits in with your personality and your lifestyle. And even if you're not in the market of getting a cat yourself, like me, I mean, I just love being around cats. I haven't had a cat for several years and this was such a nice opportunity to play with the cats, to pet the cats, to feed the cats. It was really nice experience and I think you'll enjoy it too. This cat tree is perfect so the cat can go in there and hide if he wants to get away from people and there's little cubby holes and soft furry stools for the cats to sit on and for people to sit on as well. This white cat, Sinatra, is so playful and colorful, beautiful eyes, just beautiful cat, white cat, my goodness. And then they have this TV screen that they recently put in there and the cats are just going crazy watching these birds. 
Here is a wall with all of the cats that are available for adoption. And you can get a little history about them, where they came from, how old they are, what their personality is like. So you can really understand and call the cats by their real name. You can really understand, you know, the personality of that particular cat or its circumstance. Did it lose its owner? Was it found on the streets? Was it turned in by somebody because they moved? You know, what was the history of the cat? So these people had just come from out of state and spent a nice hour with the cats. And that left us having the room all to ourselves. So let's get frisky and play with the cats. And here's Bubba and Penelope, those cats that were mentioned that they are new to coming out and being with people. So that's nice to see them. You actually can purchase a little can of snacks for the cats. And as you can see, if you put your hand out with one of the snacks, they will come up and eat out of your hands. Cats are certainly curious. Boy, put your hand out and here comes this one. What's what's going on here? What do you what do you got? Oh, I don't want any of that. This one says, I'll eat it. I'm running around burning all my energy. I'm hungry. <laughs> So yeah, having the room to ourselves was so much fun. It was like, take your pick of a cat. And this is Sinatra and he's very, very loving. Oh my goodness. Just wanted to come up and be petted and sit on your lap. And again, being curious, what, what's going on here? What's going on with the food? It's nice to see that they have this shelf here. Usually cats like to sit higher above, you know, what they're, and look down upon a scene, whether that's a windowsill or a higher shelf. And if this was in the sun, boy, you'd find yourself always having a cat on top of it. <laughs> what a beautiful view of the side of the mountain. This leads to the bump and grind trail and Claire said that she chose this spot so the cats would have something to look at and people coming down from the mountains could come and have some coffee and sit and watch the, the trail and spend some time with the cats. It's a really perfect space. So I understand that the TV is a recent addition and I have seen the cats personally just staring at the TV and pouncing on it. Here we have little balls with lights and there's all sorts of toys for the cats scattered throughout the room to keep them, you know, engaged and to keep the people who are coming to visit have something to play with the cats. It's really chock full of fun. I do see one of those shelves over here on the on the sunny side so I bet on a cool day cats are going to be vying for that spot here's Sinatra again so sweet the cats just are so loving and want to be engaged with people it's really nice to spend time with cats boy it makes me want to have a cat again
Dad is getting ready to pounce. He's got his little tail that's wagging and he sees the bird. He's getting ready to catch it. There he goes. Oh, he's like, what's, what's going on? Where is it? <laughs> Join me in this next section as I speak with Claire Rogers about her cat cafe frisky business. So Claire, tell me, I heard you have an allergy to cats. Yeah, no. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I don't think you could do this job no, without no, having no, an allergy. No, definitely not. <laughs> so tell me, why a cat cafe? So about six years ago, I was in Charleston, South Carolina. I was a director for an American Fortune uh, 100 company. Two billion dollar a year sales targets. 36 countries were supporting into me. Highly successful, made loads of money, and I hated my job. Yeah. Just despised it. I thought it was soul destroying. It did not inspire me in life. And so I was in Charleston, and after a meeting, I happened to walk past this window with all the cats in it. I thought, what is this paradise that I just walked past? So I went in the next day, and I interrogated this poor girl, she was like 22 years old, and said, what is this? And she said, it's a cat cafe. I was like, explain it, explain the business model. How does this work? How do you help cats? And I interrogated it, or I learned it all, and I thought, this is great, but I'm too old to start my life over. That was my thought. It's like, you're cute because you're 22, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I can't do that. I right. can't be irresponsible. And then basically, fast forward to COVID. I'm living in London, England. COVID hits. I'm now locked down. I'm happily married. I can't do my career anymore. I can't travel. I'm a motivational speaker as well. I can't travel. Like, literally everything shut down for yeah. us. And we were shut down for 18 months. And so I started playing a game in my head. If I could do anything, what would I do? I thought, come to Palm Springs. I'll golden girls it for the rest of my life. And I will be the crazy cat lady. I will open a cat cafe. That's awesome. I fell in love along the way. And voila. Ta-da. See, yeah. how life opens doors exactly. when, you, when you're open to it, right? Exactly. We first met you at the, um, the Pride Festival. Yes, you had a booth right. there. <clears throat> and um, so I noticed on your door, it says that this is an LGBT safe space. 100%. So I'd like to know and hear from you about why that's important for you. It is beyond <clears throat> important for me because I think it's one thing to say you're an ally and another to be public about it. Yeah. That's a huge thing. There's a lot of people in private that will say, oh, I don't care. It doesn't bother me, right. but they won't actually be public about it. Right. And so I'm saying I'm going to wave the flag and say, I am a proud ally. That's great. And this is a safe space. That's great. This is, you know, <clears throat> I have kids in my life who are kids of my friends who are identifying as LGBT and they're being bullied and they're being called bad names in school and there's cutting involved and all sorts of things. And I want these kids to know, no matter what, you come here, you are safe, you can tell us anything. Yeah. No judgment whatsoever. That's great. Uh, Zero judgment whatsoever. <clears throat> you are safe and in a validating place. Here. Yeah. Safe and, that's, and it doesn't have to be just kids. It could be anybody. Right. There is literally no judgment here. Right. Safe spaces are so important these days where around the globe, hatred of all kinds yeah. is growing. So. Yeah. And so it's very, very important to me. And if I lose customers because of it, then I'm okay with that. I have lost a couple, I think. Mm -hmm. I had some uh, derogatory comments put on my Facebook because oh. of it. <clears throat> I've had to block, <clears throat> excuse me, 56 inappropriate words off my Facebook so that they can't even post anymore. Wow. So I've had a few people say, you know, why don't you have the American flag instead? And I've had some homophobic things put on there. Don't come to Frisky. Right. If, if you don't like <laughs> it, I'm, I'm sorry about that, but this, it's beyond important to me. Right. So much so that I'm actually on the board of directors for the LGBTQ Chamber of Commerce here. That's great. Awesome. No, that's that's wonderful <laughs> that you are an advocate and you are providing that safe space for people here in Palm Springs. You know, uh, really kudos to you. Hats off to you. Thank that's you. Great. So tell me about the cats. The cats themselves uh, live here on premises. Yeah, permanently. Permanently. So how did you connect yourself with the um, shelter? The gentleman that's on the board for the Palm Springs Animal Shelter had seen an article that we had been in the Desert Sun 16 months ago saying that this was our idea. And he contacted me and said, well, we work exclusively with the Palm Springs Animal Shelter. And we thought this was all going to happen quickly. So he bought me breakfast the next day and we were all like, oh, this is amazing. And then <laughs> I was like, oops. 
<laughs> but we kept that relationship going for the last 16 months. That's so great. He just popped in to say hello to me a few minutes ago. So That's wonderful. Good. See how doors open, really, when, you, when you're open to it. Absolutely. You know? That's Absolutely. Wonderful. Yeah. So, so um, how many cats have you adopted as of now? So we've been open 10 working days. We've already adopted about five. Five in 10 days. In 10 working days. And our goal with the shelter, it's an ambitious goal, but we think that we're going to do 1,000 cats in a year. Right. That's amazing. And if, hey, if we don't hit the target and do 700, okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Yeah, <laughs> you know, right? But so we, but why not have an ambitious goal? Right. right. But only to the right homes. Of course. I mean, they all have personalities like, like people. Exactly. So, so for example, uh, one of my older cats that got adopted yesterday, not appropriate to go live in a home with four puppies. Right. You know, no disrespect to that person, but it's just not the right environment for a cat. Right. For a kitten, awesome, and so forth. Right. So, so uh, I, the ideal is a thousand cats in a year to the right homes. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, for, for the public, is there something that you need, um, anything for them to participate, you know? I think my biggest thing I would just want the public to understand is I've had a few people, maybe 5% of people say, you know, why would you charge a fee to, to go into the cat lounge? Uh, and in all honesty, it costs us 10 grand a month to run the show. And so if I could, I would let everybody in for free, but I can't. Sure. I have to recover our costs of course. and so forth. So I would just want the, the public to understand it's not that I'm trying to gouge people or anything like that. It's not just come say hi. Um, it's not that I want to gouge people or anything. It's just... That's what we have to Absolutely. do. Absolutely. I mean, and actually, we're, we're lower than any other cat cafe. I mean, you are a business here, too. Yeah. You offer coffee and tea yeah. as part of your entrance yeah. um, fee. And a lot of the cat cafes in California are about 30 to 35 bucks an hour, and nothing included. So wow. we tried to go under to be reasonable sure. to people. Absolutely. And um, you have food here. I saw that you have some um, Danish and snacks, and there's Tiny some bagels. bagels. And then we've also got to-go items. So, oh, hi, baby. You miss me? <laughs> um, and then we also got lots of trail mix and, and protein bars for the hikers that are coming down. You don't want to come into the cat lounge, but you need a snack coming off the mountain. Where you've got some healthy stuff. That's great. And yeah. then we've chosen every to go item is all from small businesses, either in California or one of the western states, somewhere that hasn't had to travel far and <laughs> cost a lot of uh, environmental costs and sure. so forth. And it's eco friendly customer or, or people who are creating these things, minority owned, gay owned, women owned, something like that. Because we're all about, we want to rise up small businesses. Right, well. right. It costs a little bit more, <clears throat> but everybody's right. And to come into the cafe itself, you don't, there's no, no fee for that. No, so no. anybody can come into the cafe and have coffee and snacks. But if you want to come in and visit with the cats, then that's yeah. where the fee comes in. Yeah, exactly. And it basically helps, it's say customers who are coming in and paying a fee. One, you're helping us recover our costs, but also you're really helping the cats as well. Absolutely. Because like this guy's been in a cage for months. Right. And so now he feels safe to come sit on people and so forth. We've got four shy babies here at the moment. Not babies, I call them all babies. But they have had, had a bit of a rough time where they've been uh, abandoned or surrendered or their owners have passed away and so forth. And so we're gradually spending time kind of socializing them. And as customers come in, they socialize to feel safe. Yeah. So I've got two of them that actually right there. This is major, major progress. They wouldn't come out of their little box room for a week. Mm -hmm. But now they're out. They don't want you to touch them, but they're getting out. Right. So people paying that fee is actually helping their past. Absolutely. Well. It is social re socializing some of them. Exactly. So that's great. Nice. It's a wonderful service. So, well, I think that this is a great concept. It's the only one in Palm Springs. That I only one in Coachella Valley. The only one in Coachella Valley. So the closest Valley. one is in LA and also San Diego. So if you get an opportunity and you're in the area, or even if you're not, come here. It's a really unique experience. I think you'll really enjoy it. And also we're doing a lot of events as well. Oh, are you? So we've got the Great Cats Book Club. So the first one is on the 19th of July. Uh, so that's a bit longer of a session. So it's still $22, but it's 75 minutes. And we're discussing Michelle Obama's new book, oh. for example. We're doing uh, Bingo on the 5th of January as well. That's only $5. To it says free entry, but it's $5 a card to make it more affordable for people who can't afford the 22 That's great. I'm doing a Stitch and Bitch. Tell me about the Stitch and Bitch. Well, no one signed up for it, so I might have to cancel it. Uh, I thought it was a great idea. Stitch and Bitch, you just sign up, 10 bucks, I think it was 10 bucks each, something like that, and we just sit for 75 minutes, and you sew, knit, 
darn you socks, whatever it is, you don't have to do anything. That's great. And just get to know one another. Stitch right. a bitch. But That's no one nice. signed up. Everybody signed up for Sunny's bingo, but nobody wants my stitch a bitch. So. <laughs> I, I think that would be a nice social. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I might have to cancel that one. But hey, we tried, right? Hey, keep them coming because you know you never know what's going to stick, right? Exactly. <laughs> Wonderful so community, um, you know, participation. And it's important to us because at the end of the day, Money's not the driver. We need to make money, of course. Right. But it's not the driver. The driver is we want to help our feet lines, but we also want to create community. Right. right. And and I also like the fact that you are doing something that you're passionate about. Very passionate. You know, because that I see it on your face, I see it in your expression. Yes. You know, and that transpires and transposes to other people. Yeah, so, exactly. And so and that goes back to the whole safe space thing as well, is maybe you're lonely and you're at home and so is a safe space whether you're LGBT or not. Come here, have a coffee. You right. know? We'll get to know your name as well and so forth. Right. Know, you don't have to be looking at them. Right. You know? Well, thank you so much for meeting with me today thank you very much and you. sharing and opening up to thank this. You. It's just awesome. Thank just you love, much. love your establishment and thank I wish you. you all the luck. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. You. And thank you for showing up. I appreciate you. <laughs> yeah, and perfect I timing. You. I need to pay you for that. <laughs> My afternoon at Frisky Business, Palm Springs' first cat cafe was such a delight. If you are in the neighborhood of Rimrock, located at 4781 East Palm Canyon Drive, Suite F, go make a visit to Frisky Business Cafe and tell either Claire or Sunny that Timmy from Timmy Talks sent you. Thanks for watching and see you next time. And please remember, both like and subscribe. Thanks much.